Safety Council Zoning uh, Subcommittee. Uh, we have four items on the agenda. Uh, first of all, uh, I am uh, Council, Squad 4 Council Stephen Reardon, the Chairman of the Subcommittee. Uh, we have also with us uh, Councilor Correggio, uh, Councilor Janino, and Councilor Hass, who are members of the Subcommittee. Uh, Councilor Novoselsky, Councilor Powers, and Councilor Ganasso are also present this evening. Um, as I said, we have four matters before the uh, subcommittee this evening, the first of which is C-13-04, an application by CBW Lending, LLC, 745th 5th Avenue, 18th floor, New York, New York, seeking permission of the University City Council to operate a commercial automotive storage parking facility at 190 VFW Parkway in Revere, Massachusetts, and the uh, applicant is represented by council, I see, and uh, just state your name and your address. Push the button, it's not working. Slight, slight technical uh, problem here. I would uh, ask that uh, anybody making a presentation with uh, slides or with, uh, or with any visual effects, please, uh, when you are referring to those uh, that uh, the, our intrepid cameraman here may be able to, uh, and producer may be able to show it. Uh, just mention that you're going to show it so he knows that it's coming up. So if you've got slides or anything, not so much what you have at the podium, but your, slot, your um, visual uh, aids, uh, if you're going to be doing that. Just, just let him know that we're going to be going to them so he doesn't uh, fall asleep on us. We still are having technical difficulties. Is it working? There you go. Um, just uh, before, uh, well, first of all, if you would uh, state your name and your address for the record. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, uh, members. James Sippoletta, 385 Broadway Revere, attorney for the petitioner. Thank you. Uh, just so uh, everybody is aware, uh, in addition to the application we have before us, uh, recommendations from slight, uh, Site Plan Review Committee, dated April 16, 2013. You're aware of those uh, recommendations, yes. are you not? Yes. All right, then we'll just proceed, and uh, we'll, we'll at some point get into that a little bit, maybe. Uh, but please proceed. Thank you. Um, as the uh, council uh, subcommittee members will recall, uh, we were before the council of the whole on a, p a petition for special permit to continue the parking at Wonderland uh, Greyhound Park property. As uh, the council is aware, the property was sold. And uh, for many years past, Wonderland had operated both commuter parking and what's called in the ordinance as automobile storage. Whereas the commuter parking would be on a day-to-day, hour-to-hour basis, the storage would be on, uh, on a longer-term uh, basis. Um, as the property owned by Wonderland was sold, two things happened. Uh, one, the MBTA was in the middle of and then concluded building its parking garage. And number two, the uh, parking uh, storage component became, um, uh, went out of existence as an accessory use to Wonderland Dog Track. Since there's no use associated with the property now, uh, we went back to the uh, um, Revere License Commission uh, to renew the license for 2013, uh, having had the license paid in full and operated for 2012, but under an agreement with the city and the MBTA. Wonderland closed its parking, uh, at least on the commuter side, when the MBTA opened, and that was on or about June or July of 2012. Um, we were notified by the planner's office and the special and the uh, site plan review committee that uh, with all of the changes that took place and the changing of the landscape and the dynamics, that a special permit now is required, and we're happy to be here to uh, apply for one. Uh, in the past, the uh, capacity of the uh, parking lot was never really met or exceeded, but the last license that was issued, as far as, far as I could tell, was for 750 cars. And that was in the year uh, 2011, it was 700, and then amended upward for 2012 to 750. When we uh, made our presentation at the Council of the Whole, uh, one or two neighbors uh, approached um, and uh, 
were heard on some issues that they had. And one was uh, with regard to cleaning the, uh, the county ditch that runs there. And the, the new owners who are uh, located in New York uh, became aware of that. I was in contact with their local reps and that uh, grassy area and the ditch was cleaned up. Additionally, they called back and indicated that the fence line and some of the, the fencing needed to be um, repaired and tended to. That was done as well. I must say that um, representing clients uh, out of New York and so far away, being different from calling right down on uh, VFW Parkway, they were amazingly prompt at responding. And uh, I've gotten several pictures and um, emails from the neighbors uh, who had expressed those concerns and we'd been working with them. And I'm sure that local council are, uh, probably is more up to date on uh, checking when, in with those uh, abutters than, than I. But as of last week, it seemed to be on track and everybody was uh, good to go. Um, as we said at the uh, public hearing, we just want to use the parking lot until there is a development plan put in place and executed as a parking lot. That's what it's been. That's what we're doing. That's what we'd like to continue to do. Uh, and of course, and in compliance with all of the ordinances, zoning and otherwise, that the city would require. Uh, if there are any questions of uh, the subcommittee members, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. And uh, any further uh, plans or maps that might be needed by the subcommittee, I have those as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Attorney Cipollotta. Can I uh, ask the ward councilor uh, to uh, chime in at this point? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this uh, motion was put in uh, some time ago, I believe in October of 12, uh, as a result of uh, inquiries I had from residents in that area uh, asking whether or not they were licensed to do this. Uh, I fully understand that uh, they did have a commuter license for 750 cars. Uh, that license uh, expired uh, uh, as a result of an agreement between uh, the city of Revere and the MBTA uh, parking garage, et cetera, and Wonderland. Uh, subsequently, they began storing uh, trucks down there and cars. The other day I went by there, there was probably 600 cars and 50 trucks. Uh, today I went by there, they've moved some of those out. Uh, my, my question is, and my concern is, uh, that uh, the city of Revere, in my opinion, if they're going to store cars and trucks down there, there should be some remuneration to the city of Revere uh, in, to uh, help uh, offset the, uh, uh, the business we're in now of uh, providing uh, services to the residents of this city. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a profit being made, not for uh, Greyhound racing or not for anything else, but for the storage of vehicles. And, and I think the, the uh, city uh, should be uh, receiving a certain fee uh, from the uh, LLC in New York. So the uh, question is, uh, how many vehicles are going to be stored down there? Should the fee be, I'm agreeable uh, as the ward councilor, certainly to uh, uh, agree with the $25 per vehicle. Uh, I think the, uh, some of them are trucks and uh, some of the, maybe there's not so many cars down there, so I think that sort of balances out. So I would be looking for, uh, in all uh, fairness to the, uh, the property owners and all fairness to the city, uh, I would be looking for uh, just throwing this out there for the committee to absorb uh, maybe uh, $25 per car for 600 cars. Some days there are 400 cars, some days there are 700 cars. So I think it balances out uh, pretty fair. Uh, Mr. Uh, Attorney, would you, uh, simple letter, would you please? Uh. I um, spoke briefly with uh, Council of the Powers today and then checked back in with the License Commission this afternoon. Uh, the License Commission uh, sets those fees, and I think it is $25. And they have their last uh, parking application here, and that was for 700 cars and they paid $17,500. Excuse the me, map. that was for the commuter parking? Uh, it, it doesn't say it, but I, it does I believe say it, for I believe parking. It was. And, and it was, uh, yeah, and I, I think a, a great deal of that was commuter. Yeah. Um, and it was, 
specific as to uh, two different areas. One that was, uh, and I think it's divided, or at least it was divided, by like Jersey barriers and the roadway. And it was specified that X number would be dedicated to commuter parking and Y number would be created, would be dedicated to um, the longer term. I think it, uh, it was seven, and then we kicked it up in 2012, uh, 2012 to 750, and that came up to 18 something. So quick calculation, it sounds right that's that that's what the commission, license commission charges. Uh, not only us, but everybody. Um, and you know, I would I would leave that to the council and to the city law department to figure out who charges the fee, so long as we don't pay twice. Um, but I, I think when we made our application for 2013, uh, we made it on the basis of 750, and we were aware that we would be charged $25 a car. That's fine. So that, uh, however that goes, I mean, um, then that's that's up to the city. The uh, the only. Uh, thing I, I have concern about is that, as you know, there's a ditch there that runs across that property. And uh, the other side of that ditch abuts the uh, Dunn Road area. And I, I certainly wouldn't want to see any cars stored in that area because of the uh, gasoline that uh, would be in them. Uh, could be a public safety issue. And uh, also the, uh, the noise when uh, they come in and pick those cars up, they have the beepers or the horns on them. And, that would be uh, disturbing the residents down there. So I, I wouldn't want to see that. But uh, if we can come to some type of an agreement with the committee and uh, send our recommendation to the uh, licensing board and request them to issue a license, that's fine with me, as long as this money coming back into the city. Thank you. Right. I, I think when we did appear before the license commission, we were about to pull the trigger on that. And uh, every license now is circulated to the department heads, and not the least of which is the city planner for zoning compliance. And but for the, zone, the uh, Frank Stringy's notation that we now required a special permit, they would have issued it, and we would have had the license. So I think um, our next step, if if this uh, special permit is granted, is to return to the license commission and um, pursue a new uh, our 2013 license. That's fine. That works for me, sir. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Powers. Uh, at this juncture, I think it would be prudent to, uh, given the fact that we give such great deference to our site plan review committee, I think I would uh, like to read into the record the recommendations of the site plan review so everybody out there understands that this is, uh, if, if this permit were to be issued, it would likely be issued with uh, these restrictions. And the uh, site plan review has made the following findings and conditions uh, respect, with respect to the special permit request. Number one. The use in question is for a commercial automotive storage parking facility and shall not include a commercial parking lot, which by definition within the Revere Revised Zoning Ordinance means a lot or structure for the purpose of storing or parking automobiles, buses, or trucks, which is available to the public generally on a basis for a fee and which is not incident to or related to a principal use on the same lot or adjoining lot, all lots, and includes public commuter parking and public remote parking facilities. Uh, number two, the commercial automotive storage parking facility shall not occupy more than six acres and the special permit shall specify the maximum number of parking spaces that shall be dedicated for this use. Number three, the commercial automotive storage parking facility shall be principally accessed by Route 1A, that's the VFW Parkway only, and shall not be accessed by any local roadway maintained by the City of Revere. And finally, number four, a 50-foot buffer strip must be provided between the commercial automotive storage parking facility and all abutting residential uses and along all property lines which were uh, lines where such property lines front on a public way. Uh, Councilor Correggio, I believe, has some comments or questions. Uh, I, I believe that, you know, this, I don't know how many trucks you plan on storing there uh, besides the motor vehicles. Can you tell us approximately how many uh, trucks? Uh, I think it varies, and I think what uh, Councilor Powers has observed over the, the course um, is, is the max. It would be about 50. And just to, to elaborate on that a little bit, um, these I can't bring my car down there and leave it and go to the MBTA or I go into Boston or something. These are basically overflow uh, lots for uh, 
companies that maybe have been moved off the airport, rent-a-car companies and so forth. And I, I think some of those are trucks, not many of them. So if there's a maximum that you, I, I would say 50 is probably the most that, that they've had down there. And the good part about this as opposed to it being a parking lot as it was prior to the MBTA parking facility being made is you're not having all of these people coming and going at the same time, like at rush hour or in the morning to catch the tea. These are cars that are stored and basically left there for days on end. So you're not getting a lot of that in and out. And that was one of those issues that was key at the site plan review process as well. Oh, the, and the answer to your question, I think 50, I just don't know. Uh, the other question I have, um, I believe the trucks should pay more money than the cars. If you're charging $25 for the cars. I mean, the truck, it's a big vehicle. It's commercial. I, I feel the city should get a little more on the commercial end, uh, especially on a truck. So maybe $40 for the truck and $25 for the car would be, you know, admirable. Uh, that, that's the problem I have. I feel the truck should pay a little more money, uh, being st especially if you have up to 50 trucks. I, I, I sort of defer to the license commission's established fee schedule. I, I don't know how that changes right. or, um, because that's not something they gave me to think about at site plan, but uh, it's something to think about now. All right, thank you. Councilor, uh, Councilor Hess. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this originally came up as a council motion by Councilor uh, of Ward 5 Powers and myself because we didn't like what we saw down there. Now, I have a couple of questions to the learned attorney. Uh, Jim, is this an arm length transaction as far as the sale of the property? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely is. In fact, as part of the uh, special permit application, we were required to file a copy of the deed. And I think the copy of the deed is a matter of record. It and is. it is. It, this is uh, and, and the other thing that I, I may have not been specific about initially is that this is really not a permanent situation. It's not, not long term. I know that the council is very eager, as is the administration uh, generally, to have this property developed and to the highest and best use and to the best benefit of the taxpayers in the city of Revere. So as this moves down the road to a development, this parking situation has a very, very uh, finite uh, life to it. You would not mind if a stipulation was put on here for two years? The license? I mean, I, I see it's a valuable piece of property, yeah. as we all know. I mean, the comments coming from the people uh, going into it, granted, when the land shut down near commuter parking, all right, but then they see all these trucks and cars on the other side. And the question was, who are they? Where'd they come from? And it took a city council motion to bring that to light, which I think is embarrassing. Okay, we are the ones that grant the special uh, uh, permit without question. And the thing is, to derive $10,000 for 400 cars, that's not a lot of money in the course of a year. And you look at the people coming to, we're trying to build up a revere, and you look at cars, 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 granted for future development. I understand right. that. That's why I think we should put a time limit on it uh, to hope ex expedite the development of the area. The market has turned, there's no question, all right? But you know, th those are my questions, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for $10,000, I don't think it's worth it. Where the mayor's spending money all over here, uh, I think we have to really get involved with it and try to develop it. Um, I, I think that the license is only a one-year license anyway. So, uh, you know, I, and I think that the uh, commission can only grant them one year at a time. So the, the uh, but once I hate, you get I hate the to first use the, year, the, word, Jimmy. The, the power that yeah. the city has over it, but the, the regulation that the city actually has over it is uh, you have them on a real short leash of 12 months at a time. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I just couldn't stipulate for at least as a matter of the special permit to a time limitation, but just to assure the council and the uh, subcommittee that the licenses are only 12, 12 month licenses. All right, one last question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, do you know what the dollar amount was that they purchased the property for? It's, I, I don't, but it's on the deed. Um, right, well, I don't have I the used to, 
We yeah. just realized this because of the council motion of powers of myself to bring you up right. before us. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. I, I knew, I under, you I knew four months ago. Yeah. I, I just don't know, but it is. it should be a matter of record because I attached it to the back of the petition. So we would have it. Uh, uh, clerk would have that, correct? Indeed, yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Thank you, uh, Jim. Thank you, uh, thank you, Councilor Hassan. Uh, Councilor Gonasso. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me the time to speak. I have a couple of questions, uh, Attorney Cipolletta. Based on the fact that I have a, a little bit of knowledge of this whole concept of uh, one land dog track uh, parking because I was a license commissioner when they init uh, initially voted and we voted for the uh, parking permit. And in those, we had it pretty well clear. We had, we had it indicated that each individual parking spot would be outlined as it is. There would be a uh, periodical check on the amount of cars coming in, and that would uh, go up and, uh, as seen fit because it never went down. And uh, it seemed like the Wonderland management uh, held fast to uh, those stipulations. Uh, I, for one, as a citizen of uh, this city and t taking pride in our community, am very, I'm very offended by seeing the, uh, those large trucks in the area. I, I really don't think we're that desperate that we need 17,500 a year that we're going to make. We try to, uh, on one hand, we try to beautify and we, uh, we're encouraging our residents and we're encouraging the business community to uh, enhance their properties, make it aesthetically valuable to our community, and uh, make it a pleasant environment. Now, a prime piece of property in our community is Wonderland Dog Track site. And for years, it, we tolerated a parking lot. And then that was part and parcel to a place that provided uh, 100 jobs for our community. So we lived with that. This particular reasoning, uh, and, I, and, and I know it was mentioned that this is a, a short-lived thing, but I've seen short, and, you know, because of the longevity I've seen, had in this council, I've seen... Uh, short-term things last for years. So there is no, there's no uh, process that's going to tell us that within a year or so that this property is going to be developed. And so I'm concerned about that. This could go on for years. And I'm concerned about the size of these, these trucks. This is going to turn into a trucking terminal because it's more financially feasible to the person leasing out their properties to rent to a, a truck concern rather than an automobile. And an automobile is not that nice to look at, but it's not that unpleasing. But I think trucks are, and, 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 and that's one of the things. And as, as far as, and I do have the knowledge of the License Commission as being a former member, those, when, once the December comes up, they renew those automatically. So those are automatic. So they can go off in infinity for, for, as a parking lot if nothing happens and develops at that site. So there's no sh term limitation on parking uh, lots. So we could live with that conceivably for years. I'm concerned about that. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm concerned about we're getting short money for this particular apostle, you know. And, and I'm concerned also that a couple of members of the city council had to bring it to the attention of the ownership of that property that, you know, you've got to abide by some rules and regulations here. And we had so many mixed uh, views coming at us and opinions coming at us that was like, almost like someone was trying to befuddle the whole situation. Uh, like every time we said, well, is it legal? And someone come back and said, is it legal? And we became an, a, uh, you know, you could go on forever saying, is it legal? Is it not legal? Until push comes to shove, then we have, if we have to have one person get a license for something of a similar nature where they only have 20 cars, what's the difference when they have 700 cars? You've you got to have a license. So there has to be some sort of uh, authority overseeing this property and protecting the interests of the city. So this is not a, a, a hardship on the uh, people. I find it, it should be an embarrassment on them for, for not coming forward and, and bringing these values out to the community and to the uh, administration and the city council. So I would like, you know, I'm not opening arms for this particular proposal because I don't think it's a great proposal for our city. I would not disagree with the cars. I would have no objection to that because it's been that usage for years. It's the same thing as the gaming institution at uh, Suffolk Downs. It's a gaming institution for years. But I do have exception to trucking, and I really, I really find it that that, to me, is not pleasantly uh, uh, appealing to uh, a lot of the people in the area. You know, if I had my property right next door to it, I'd be outraged. 
I, I would be very upset with having all, all those trucks in my backyard. And God forbid some screwball goes and uh, ignites uh, some uh, truck there, it will be a massive uh, uh, territory, uh, territory for disaster. So that's all I have to say, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the latitude. Thank you, uh, Council Ganassa. I would like to welcome Council Arrigo to the chamber. He's a member of the subcommittee as well. Uh, Council Arrigo, we are discussing uh, uh, item number one on tonight's agenda, which is the application by uh, uh, CBW lending for uh, parking uh, a, I'm sorry, a, a special permit to allow parking at 190 VFW Parkway. Uh, I'll allow you uh, to maybe get up to speed if you'd like a little bit. Uh, I would may just make a couple of comments here. Uh, well, first of all, Mr. Sipoletta, if you could uh, answer my one question, and uh, I would also, uh, in, in response to uh, Councilor Hass's question, about the uh, purchase price of the property. I just had it here. Uh, I believe it was uh, indicated on our Revere property data card that it was $9,820,000 that was paid for the property whenever it was purchased. It doesn't indicate that to me. But in any case, um, the only observations I would make, and I agree with Council Granasso, no one wants to see a, a, what is essentially a parking storage area for trucks uh, in, in our environments we, we have just we're just too compact an area we don't have any wide open spaces where you could put a fence up and never look at the truck you're gonna see them uh, the people uh, in the area are gonna hear them starting up when they when they come in uh, uh, when they leave uh, they're gonna hear them shutting down when they come in uh, on the other hand I would uh, make note of the fact that uh, Again, this is a prime piece of real estate. Uh, we, I think, have reasonable expectations that within the next few years, now that the economy is getting better, that the people who own it have really no interest in, in running a, a truck stop or a truck lot uh, when there may be something, and there's likely will be something out there far more lucrative. Uh, the other thing I um, note I would make is that they have to pay the real estate taxes on this thing, and they have to do it some, somehow, some way. And I think we are kind of, in a way, although it may not be some, not the best use out of it, uh, we're, we're allowing them to make some money off of it, and we don't have, that way we don't have to go around chasing property taxes, perhaps. Um, so I think, I do have one question, though. Do you have any idea what, they, what the going rate is for parking cars and trucks in the lot? Any idea what they plan on charging people? I, I don't know, and I don't think they're going to be charging people. I think that's contract rate with, with the corporations, be it... Thrifty or Enterprise, whoever who is down there. I see. I see. So it's going to be a flat fee to them for, and they will guarantee. Are they have a maximum number of vehicles they can? I, put I, in I there. think that's right, and I think that um, we we applied for 750, and I I assume that that's what the <coughs> what the application will be in 13. But and, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, for reminding me what that sale price was. Um, I would point out, and I think the tax card, the assessor's card is there as well. I don't know what the tax is on nine million bucks, but I do know that the new owners have been paying the tax in full without abatement. Um, unlike you've seen me up here over the years, of, you know, representing Wonderland, when in its waning day, when we were asking for agreements to pay taxes late or to enter into installment plans. So I, I do understand that seventeen thousand or eighteen thousand dollars for license fee is not a big drop in the city's tax revenue bucket. However, the other part of that equation is that the owner has been paying the, the real estate tax one hundred percent, one or hundred percent on time, without the request for an abatement. So they're they're doing what um, we would hope or expect them to do. Um, in, in terms of their obligations. Uh, and, and I know and I agree with, with the councilors and, and with you, Mr. Chairman, they don't want it to be a parking lot either. Uh, they want it to be something. And I know what they, I think everybody knows what they, they're trying to do and to try to tie it into some other activity and make it, uh, make it in harmony with what the City of Revere's development plan is. Well, that plan is still coming down the road. Uh, but there is not an expectation that they want to be in the parking business uh, at all. And one follow-up question. As far as the uh, thrifties of the world that are, that are contracting here, will they be paying us the rental surcharge fee on these vehicles? I th if, if they're, 
I don't know. I, I know that when I was doing Thrifty, we agreed to, and, and Select as well, right. we agreed to pay uh, and register the cars in Revere and pay the excise. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly where they say their their place of origin is. Yeah, Boston may have some of them. If it's Hertz, Boston probably already has them tied up. That's a that's a very 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 intriguing question at this point. Um, and yeah. Right. Right. That's an interesting. Uh, I, I, you know something, I'm beginning to think that that, uh, let me mention one more thing. Uh, the assessed value of this property is actually $14,912,700. Then I have so no that, clue what the tax is. They could, well, it's considerably more than the tax on 9820 right. I can right. tell you that much by 50%. Uh, but uh, I would entertain a motion to keep this on the table, and if you could possibly uh, ascertain uh, the effect of our vehicle surcharge on the contractors uh, to the um, uh, petitioner um, who have uh, rented rentable vehicles that would be a subject to the surcharge, I would like to know the answer to that. We would like to know the answer to that question, I think, and I think it's an excellent question. And I uh, think you'd also, uh, do you, I, I, I'm gathering you'd also want to know about the trucks. Trucks as well. Yeah, the trucks is the, uh, you know, we're thinking more in terms of, well, I, th I, I get the impression that we'll tolerate the trucks short term, but we'd like to know if we're getting anything better than right. the $25 fee. And I think that, you know, this is a quid pro quo type of situation here more than anything else. No one wants trucks and cars parked in valuable real estate, but we could tolerate it for a while if, uh, I get it. while we, uh, we get something better, maybe. Yeah. Limited time. Council Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, this situation has been going on down there since uh, June of uh, 2012, okay? I just don't want to see this uh, linger in committee and let this thing continue with no uh, revenue coming into the city and, and the vehicles being parked down there night after night after night. Uh, and I somewhat agree with Councilor Ganasso on the trucks, but uh, those trucks, uh, from what I see down there, are parked more over near the clubhouse and not really up against the uh, residential areas. I met down there this, uh, this week with uh, a fellow named Jack. He's the uh, maintenance manager down there. And they've been pretty uh, cooperative. They've cut the grass on the vacant lots they own on Charmot Street. Uh, they're in the process of putting up a new stockade fence along a portion of that property and uh, repairing the other guardrails down there. So uh, I agree with uh, Council Reardon. This is not going to be a long-term thing. But while it is down there, let's get some revenue into the city coffers for those trucks and cars being parked down there. We need every dime we can get in the city today. People are being overburdened with their tax bills, their water rates, etc. cetera. Let's, uh, let's get this thing rolling. So, Mr. Chairman, I would ask you, uh, if you want to lay this on the table, when our next uh, zoning subcommittee meeting would be, so we can resolve this, get it to the licensing board, and get the revenue coming into the city. Thank you, Councilor Powers. Before I... Uh, I just have one question. Go ahead. Did, they do not have a permit to park anything on their property, correct? As far as I know, well, how the licensing... Well, first of all, licensing cannot issue a permit to park because there is no uh, ordinance that would allow them to request the, uh, the, light, the permit right. to park, as far but, as I know right But now. again, the question is, Mr. Chairman, how would they legally park there? How they what? How are they legally parked there? Uh, presumably they are not at this point, just like at uh, one time we had helicopters taking off from Ward 5 that were not legally permitted to do that either. Right. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't see that as a huge issue, but I would like... No, what, again, what I do see is that the issue needs to be resolved. Yeah. I mean, Meet these guys week. are paying taxes down there with nothing but a lot of, lot of asphalt spread all over the place, and I, and I can understand their, their query. I, we're hoping to cooperate with them in the future to have something really nice down there that we can you, really can not only live with, huh? but uh, that, we can, uh, uh, that we can appreciate. Was um, make, Mr. Mr. Chairman, point of information. Uh, one at a time, please. Councilor Rigo has not had an opportunity to chip in here, and I know he's anxious to do so. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I like the idea of getting a full revenue estimate for what the property will be at I, that was one thing that I wanted to see uh, going in. Um, I guess my question is if 
uh, if we don't want to see this piece of property become a parking lot, why would we permit it to be a parking lot? <laughs> you know, and and I get the I get the short term answer, but if the long term and the the vision of uh, Wonderland Tea Stop and the beach and the city is for there to be, um, I mean that that's a beautiful piece of property that's worth a lot of money, and. I just question whether or not we should be, you know, considering opening opening ourselves up for having it become a parking lot because that's a little bit easier to manage and to sell than having having um, to go out and try and develop that property uh, for and to get the the best of what we think it's worth. So I just raise that question. I do look forward to the um, to the revenue estimate and and taking a look at that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Rigo, and um, your, your words are well, well spoken and well taken. I, I think we've gone a little beyond uh, what we have time for at this point because we do have a time limit this evening. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to comment on this from the audience? I, I neglected to ask. I didn't see anybody that anxious to, so I assume not, and it looks like I was right. Um, so I will entertain uh, Councilor Hass's motion to leave this on the table. All of the committee, in favor? Opposed? So we're going to leave this in committee for now, uh, Attorney Sipoletta. Perhaps you could uh, make some determination as to whether or not uh, there will be our, our surcharge ordinance will be in effect uh, for the cars that are uh, leased, uh, owned by the, um, uh, the uh, leasing companies uh, and uh, rental car companies. And uh, we'll try to put this on for, when are we doing this next, do you know? No, when's the next meeting? No, we can't do it on the 10th. Okay. Uh, we'll do it on the meeting after NAC. It'll be within three or four Wait, weeks I anyway. I'll communicate if it's okay direct, directly with the chairman. Uh, you can sh communicate with the clerk the or the chairman, yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely. I'll try to, I may not get all those answered at the same time, but as I get the answers, I'll get them into you. That would be fine. Thank you Mr. so much. Mr. Chairman, are we setting a date certain for this to be? No, because we don't know what, I'm not sure what the council uh, is going to be meeting. As you know, we try to hold these uh, public, uh, I mean, these uh, subcommittee hearings just before the, uh, but it will not be on the 10th. So it's my hope that whatever is agreed upon would be retroactive to 1 January 2013. Again, that's something we can discuss at the uh, at the subcommittee level. I'm sure it'll be subject to uh, obviously the vote of the full city council in any case. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next matter we have before us is uh, an application. Uh, excuse me, lost my. Can I have the agenda, uh, please? Thank you. Next matter is um, item number C-13-06, an application by Frank Licata, 244 Vinton Street, Melrose, seeking permission from the Revere City Council to modify and extend a non-conforming four-family structure on lot A-1 at 200 Ocean Avenue, Revere, Massachusetts. And, Council, please uh, state your name and your address. Attorney Lawrence Simeone, 300 Broadway, Revere, Massachusetts. At the Committee of the Whole, we made our presentation. Uh, essentially, to summarize the presentation, we have a non-conforming structure that's been built back in 1920. It's a four-family structure. It's in the 2 district, and it's on Ocean Avenue. Essentially, what the, the applicant seeks to do is, on the second floor, build an addition which is uh, 15 by 19. That particular addition you will see by the architect's presentation will open up for an entire revamping of the interior of the structure. When the couple hundred thousand dollars worth of renovations are done uh, by Mr. Licata, who's owned this property for many, many years, uh, essentially the goal of the project would have been met, that is to improve the property dramatically, uh, both exterior and interior-wise, put some money into this uh, very nicely located building um, and not increase any units and not increase uh, any bedrooms. Uh, presently, if you looked at this structure, you'd see that they're all pretty much one bedrooms slash studios. Uh, when the individual project is done, there'll be an increase of approximately 300 square feet on the first floor. There'll be uh, new locate, located bedrooms uh, in three of the units 
and I'll let Mr. Rainier explain that, take you through the interior dimensions. I respectfully request that this is a special permit to modify a non-conforming structure. Uh, it is a non-conforming structure because in the RC2 <coughs> district, this particular structure has failed to meet the dimensional requirements. As such, it has to come before you, your honorable body, not so much for the interior design, but for the small 300 square foot exterior, uh, second floor that's being added, which you know, basically sets the program, adding two bedrooms, and ultimately, as you can see from Mr. Ranieri, as we're talking to you, uh, ultimately will establish a, a new design interior-wise. Mr. Chairman, I'm Ron Ranieri, Ranieri Associates Architects, 135 Mass Ave, Boston. And I have some slides to show if we can put them up on the screen. Turn on the computer. It's on. It's, it's up. Computer's on. This? few minor technical issues here again. Our, uh, our engineer slash city clerk is uh, perfect. <laughs> managed to repair. Thank you. Go so right ahead, Mr. Lacan. This, I mean, thank Mr. You. Uh, this drawing is the site plan of the existing conditions. And the renovation addition that we're doing will not affect the site plan because there's no work being done on the first floor except relocation of an existing column. Uh, there's a there's an existing column in the corner of the building. If I can find my button, right over there. And all we're going to do is move that column over a little bit to that dot that's underneath the stairwell. And I'll show you in the next slide, in the next couple of slides, how that works. Just to uh, give you an idea of what we're talking about, this is the existing building, and the uh, this is the left side of the building. This is Ocean Ave along here. Waiting for the slide to move. There we go. So this is the one story area now that's a side of the parking area. The parking is in here, there's existing four spaces. And what we're going to do is put a second floor on top of this existing one story part that will attach to the existing second story here. So the, the way the floor plan works out, this is the first floor, and the first floor has two units. The pink is one unit, the purple is another unit. And what we're going to be doing is adding a stairway on the ground floor. It's gonna intersect with the ground, a new stairway. And there's that new column that I was talking about, because as you've seen in the future pictures, there's a new deck being built over here. And then the second floor has two units also. Uh, the green represents one unit, the yellow represents another. So now the, uh, the addition on the second floor is right there. The, the yellow square and the purple square are the addition to the second floor. And those, that is two bedrooms. One bedroom is for this yellow unit here. You'll enter right that, there at that doorway. So the idea is that there's a, a unit here that, that has either a small bedroom or studio, however you want to call it, but it's not a large bedroom. So the, um, the owner wants to increase the size of the bedroom in this unit. So it still maintains as a one bedroom unit, even though we're adding a bedroom. Then this purple bedroom here, this is another bedroom that connects to a stairway, and I'll go back one slide, so that the purple is this unit on the first floor. So you walk up a stairway inside what used to be a bedroom here, to the second floor to get to the new bedroom, which will be bigger than what was the original bedroom down here. Then this will become some sort of a study. It's not big enough to put a bed in, so they'll use it as a TV room or a study or something like that. So again, that's where that, that second floor unit happens. And then uh, you, you might remember there was a green unit on the left side, and I'll go back to that. This is the attic area, and right now there's a stairwell that goes up to the attic, and there's a room up there that's a small room that they use for sitting and storage. The objective is to take and put the uh, bedroom up on this level, because right now 
this this little room right here is actually the bedroom for this unit and it's basically a sun room so this will revert back to a sun room and then you'll walk up the stairway to get to the bedroom for this unit which will be in the attic so the bedroom in the attic requires a small addition to the roof a small dormer so here we are again this is the uh, the one story unit this is the side of the building, the right side where the parking is. This is Ocean Ave. So the one-story unit gets this one-story addition above it, so it becomes a two-story. And then on the other side, over here, is where we're going to be building the dormer. Here's Ocean Ave again. So we're going to be building a dormer here to get a unit in the attic. So that's the, essentially what we're doing. So we're taking an existing four unit building which has one bedroom each and we're adding on to the building to create a four unit building that has one bedroom each. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will at this point, uh, unless uh, Attorney Simeone has any comments. No, uh, Mr. Chairman, that, should, that concludes the presentation. Again, it was, uh, well, had not plenty of time to talk about this at the Committee of the Whole and uh, just ask you to consider voting for the special permit. Well, let's see if anybody has anything to say about that. I would ask the uh, ward council, Council Novoselsky, if he would like ward council to make council a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Who has told me to the next door ward council. Councilor Penter isn't here, so we'll take the next best thing we have. Well, so for the record, just so you know, I've spoken to Councilor Penter. He is in favor. I appreciate, we'll I appreciate that. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Novoselsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the uh, position you put me in. <laughs> number, number two for Ward 2. Um, you know, you don't have to talk. Well, I, I do because... I thought you uh, did. We, we, have a, we have an issue, and uh, th this directly abuts uh, my ward uh, along the MBTA Blue Line tracks, and um, I had asked uh, Council Simeone to uh, have a uh, neighborhood meeting in which did not did not occur uh, from the last public hearing that we had. And um, there is a neighbor back there, and uh, she has a uh, serious concern, a legitimate concern, where, you know, I know uh, if you go to court, this wouldn't hold up. But, you know, when people go out and look out their window on a second floor and see a nice view of the ocean and the beach, and all of a sudden somebody is building a, a, a block to that, you know, there's an issue. And I think, you know, I think that uh, there should be some kind of uh, discussions with the neighbor, which, again, have not been, have not been held. And uh, I, would, I would hope that, uh, based on some prior discussions that I had with uh, Council Simeone, that um, we discuss it. And until such time that that happens, I would ask that this be, ta you know, after some discussion, of course, I would ask that this be tabled and um, that we uh, have the, uh, the meetings as requested and then uh, bring it back to the uh, next uh, meeting and, and come up with some kind of uh, final, the final decision on what we want to do. So uh, as of now, Mr. Chairman, uh, that's what I have to say now until some of the other councilors speak, but uh, that's my, uh, my play on this right now. Thank you. Thank you for your input, Councillor. I believe Councillor Haas has some comments, as questions. Yeah, as, Ron, as far as the height, will the maximum height change at all with the... No, no this roof line will be maintained with the existing roof line. Existing. And what's the actual square footage increase compared to the original? Thirty-five hundred square foot. Right. And sorry, there will be thirty-five. Right. Exactly. An increase of five hundred square foot. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hass. Microphone. District, so it's a five-story height. This is buildings two and a half stories. What's that? Right. Won't be higher than that. Correct. What you might notice from the picture, if it's being passed along, is that uh, 
and again, no disrespect to the president and no disrespect to his efforts to help his, to help his constituents. But as you can see, the railroad tracks are quite long, quite, quite wide, and the vegetation is substantial. So, I mean, to say that the individual somehow is going to be blocked, um, I'm not exactly sure if that's 100% true. I've actually stood in the driveway. But that's not to say that, uh, you know, once we get through the subcommittee that I won't sit and talk to the president and do the best I can. Uh, we have a, an individual who is an owner of this property for many, many years, and he's trying to uh, improve his property somewhere around $200,000. And he, unlike others, he's not coming in for eight units. He's asking for the same four units he has. So uh, respectfully, um, I, I would ask for a vote tonight, and uh, I will uh, commit to talking to uh, the president, it's about the neighbor. Um, I'm taking a motion from the uh, subcommittee. Mr. President, if I yes, may, sir. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, just uh, to uh, rebut a little on the council, uh, again, with, no res to res with all due respect, um, he was talking about his, the view from the driveway, and this view is not that's being blocked, it's from the lady's second floor. So, you know, you have a, you know, a high up higher view from the second floor, which he did not go up to. And uh, I, w I would duly respect that this be held off for the next meeting until such time that uh, this, this is uh, finalized and a common decision comes about. At this point, Councilor Hass has made a motion to report this out favorably, if I'm not incorrect, Councilor Hass. All in favor of reporting this out favorably. Would you like a roll call, please? Councilor Arrigo. Yes. Councilor Correggio? Yes. Councilor Janino? Yes. Councilor Hass? Yes. And Councilor Reardon votes yes as well. Uh, so this will be reported all favorably to the entire uh, body uh, at the next meeting, which obviously is not tonight. Um, and in the meantime, perhaps you should discuss this a little further with uh, Councilor Novoselsky. I have might every be, intention to. Might be appropriate, and uh, it will be reported all favorably at the next meeting, which is, I believe, the 10th of June as it's scheduled present. That'll close the hearing on this matter unless anybody else has anything to offer. And I don't, once again, I apologize for not requesting it, but I kind of perceived that we didn't. Uh, thank you, thank uh, you again. Council. Um, the third item on the agenda is uh, C-13-07, petition uh, by AL Prime Energy Consultant, Inc., 18 Lark Ave Saugus, Mass., seeking permission from the Revere City Council to reconstruct and expand a non-conforming use and structure to enable the appellant to structure, uh, to construct rather, a 2,200 uh, square foot retail convenience store and 10 gasoline pumps on lot 215-4 at 655 Revere, Revere Beach Parkway, Revere, Massachusetts. Uh, and I see we have, Attorney Brown, would you please uh, uh, state your name and your address? Buckley, I'm sorry. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the subcommittee. Attorney Dan Buckley, along with Attorney Jerry D'Ambrosio, on behalf of AL Prime, 14 Proctor Avenue, Revere, Mass. In addition, we've got uh, the project engineer, Anthony Guba, as well as Brian Shannon, representative AL Prime at the subcommittee hearing. Uh, this matter was held at the uh, su uh, City Council public hearing on April 22nd, which was referred to this subcommittee. Uh, the applicant is looking for the special permit for reconstruction and expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming use and non-conforming structure at 655 Revere Beach Parkway for the purpose of, as Chairman, Mr. Chairman stated, a 2,200 square foot, uh, one floor building and 10 gasoline pumps along with the convenience store. Uh, this matter, uh, at the request of uh, Ward 1 Councilor, uh, Councilman Penta, uh, was uh, at a neighborhood meeting at the location in April. Uh, a number of uh, neighbors came out and uh, reviewed the engineering plans as well as had uh, some back and forth conversation. In addition to the neighborhood meeting, we've had uh, numerous, uh, myself and attorney Jerry D'Ambrosio, had numerous individual meetings uh, at our office and, um, and at the uh, location. Finally, uh, getting uh, some much needed exercise, uh, hit the pavement and actually spoke with a lot of uh, the neighborhood uh, on Vinyl Street, on Bayview Street, on Victoria Road, and as well as uh, Revere Beach Parkway. Uh, I'd like to present the plans of the renovations to this subcommittee uh, for your review. As you can see from the engineering plans, 
there is currently a 1,400 square foot, uh, one floor building on the property. The, uh, the property is 16,600 square feet at the intersection of Vinyl Street and Revere Beach Parkway in the RB district. The proposal is to move a, and create a new same one, uh, one story building at the corner of the property. And I will get into the reasonings of that in a moment. In addition to that renovation, there will be a change from a four pump uh, gas station to a 10 pump station and actually move it from uh, across Vinyl Street to Moore uh, in the middle of the property. And I will get to the, uh, the reasoning for that in a moment. Finally, uh, the tank removals, which currently authorized and uses a 30,000 gallons, will not be increasing uh, the gallons at the property, but we're actually moving to the other side. Uh, in addition, there will be a new canopy uh, uh, constructed over these fuel dispensers, and uh, importantly, a drainage system, which the property, cur uh, property currently does not have, will be in implemented. Uh, with uh, many conversations and meetings with the city engineer, uh, a, a storm scepter would be installed on the rear Beer Beach Parkway, and what that would do would be uh, to catch the the uh, you know hazardous waste that comes off the uh, impervious structure, goes through, catches those toxins, and then finally releases the clean water into the city uh, into the city uh, drainage. Now, this proposal uh, from Al Prime is uh, a one, pl a one million plus investment in the neighborhood. Now, what are the benefits of these renovations to the neighborhood? Well, first and foremost, uh, some of the big issues that the neighborhood and the city had with this property was the U-Haul that was there. Uh, AL Prime has gotten rid of that U-Haul. I know a lot of the neighborhoods and abutters had issues with the trucks coming and going. That's gone. The U-Haul is not coming back. Uh, secondly, one of the big issues that I've heard from uh, neighborhood and the city as well is the congestion on Vinyl Street that backs up with the current uh, dispensers where they are. If you could see on this uh, engineering plan, I've also provided photographs in the application. Uh, when the, the four dispensers are coming across from Revere Beach Parkway, the, tr the cars travel up Vinyl Street and it starts getting backing up. Now the reason that happens is because there's not much room in between the current dispensers, which comes to, which comes to my next point of where the building is being moved to. The building is being moved to it's the back corner, which allows a significant, uh, significant areas between these dispensers to allow the cars that are waiting for the car in front of them, instead of continuing to wait and allow a, back, uh, a backup, to get around that uh, car in front of them and go on their way. As a, as a result of uh, opening this area and adding the dispensers, this will get rid of the congestion on Vinyl Street, which I know has been a major issue in this neighborhood. Other, area, other areas, it's in, I know Councilman Guanasso identified this issue for the city, was to beautify the city of Revere. Now, as you can tell, maybe the city, uh, city planner has got his hands on this and, and in fact is beautifying this, uh, this property. If you can see in the front, Revere Beach Parkway, adding a number of trees, and the landscaping in the corner at the intersection of Vinyl Street and Revere Beach Parkway, and along a brand new fence on uh, the abutting property on Bayview, as well as landscaping across. I know since the city council hearing in April, there were a, a few uh, people that came to this with some issues. I can uh, represent the city council that myself and Jerry D'Ambrosio have, have, have had meetings with some of these individuals, uh, specifically uh, the property owners of 180 Vinyl Street, and they have uh, asked us to provide this to the subcommittee hearing as they could not be present. In sum and substance, the, uh, the property owner of 180 Vinyl is uh, withdrawing any opposition to the application for the special permit. Uh, I briefly mentioned uh, my meetings with individual owners and occupiers of the neighborhood, and I've actually had an opportunity to get uh, a petition in support of this application uh, for, the, uh, for the engineering plans and renovations. I've also uh, provided, while it's been filed with the city clerk, I've also provided some copies for the subcommittee to Thank you, uh, 
Thank you, Attorney Buckley. Just, uh, and and one more note. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. I know uh, we've, we've met with Councilman Penta, who is not here tonight, is in support of this application. And I know there is at least one direct abutter present today that hadn't had an opportunity to go at the last meeting that might want to say a few words. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Buckley. Uh, is there, is there someone else that would like to say a few words? Because we'll do that, I think, right now, if uh, there is another party that would like to speak. Please come forward. Uh, the microphone is already on. Just state your name and address, sir. Good evening. My name is Fritz Gerald Francis. I'm and at 18 address? Bayview. Thank you. Uh, you say whatever you like about the proposal. Yes, uh, it ought to be a nice, convenient way, because I have two kids, and it's very easy around the corner for me to get to plan A and B so I don't have to drive all the way down River Beach Parkway is about 10, 15 minutes away. Mm -hmm. So that'd be much better for me that way. I know it's like two or three seconds away from the house. Can just go around the corner and make it easier for the kids. Yep. So yeah. uh, as far as a convenience store is concerned, you're, you're speaking? What is it? The convenience of the convenience store, is that what you're talking yes. about? Yes. Gas also. Yeah, yep. I don't have to travel far to get it. Very good. So it'd be easier that way. Much better for me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, at this point, uh, I'll open it up to the committee, uh, subcommittee rather, uh, Councilor Hass. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, we keep on hearing about these meetings. I wish I was notified as a ward council because I represent the whole area. And when councils have uh, meetings that we're not duly notified, it's embarrassing because the people feel that you don't care. Uh, on the issue of what we're talking about this evening, I believe it's a great opportunity. Uh, we're bringing new tanks, we're bringing new pumps, the safety factor, without question. Uh, they're going from four pumps to 10 to help service the clientele. Uh, I think, as the general indicated, there is no way to get a loaf of bread or uh, milk in your area. You have to probably get on the Broadway, so that's, as you said, sir, that's a major convenience. Uh, basically, basically, what they said at the meeting in April and this evening, I would be for this application. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Correggio. Thank you, Councillor Correggio. Uh, Councillor Janino. Thank you. Um, my only concern with this project was originally the comment from the abutters, but a lot of the names on this petition were a lot of the people that spoke against it initially. So I think it's really great to see that you guys were able to work with these abutters and um, that they were, in fact, you know, the first, second, and third people to sign and are willing to write a letter in support of it. So I think that speaks a great deal for the project. Um, as well as in terms of beautification, you know, I feel like every meeting we talk about how to beautify our city and adding all of the greenery and all of those safety features, I think it really is going to make that area of Rivera look great. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Giannino. Uh, Council Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have frequently uh, stopped in there to purchase gasoline. Uh, I can say honestly that uh, I've had problems uh, with the trucks parked there. And uh, the fact that they are moving out, I think that's uh, a benefit to the neighborhood. I know any time I've pulled in there, there have been cars backed up because they had those rental trucks there. And uh, if that's part of this plan to move them out, I will certainly support this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councilor Paulus. Uh, Councilor Gonasso. That's part of the hardship, Mr. Chairman, of being last, because uh, I was going to also say that the uh, removal of the truck rentals is a, is a great addition. As uh, you heard earlier, I, I don't have a favor for having truck rentals within our city. I don't think the aesthetic value is enhanced by having any of them in the area. 
and I think that after looking at the scope of this project and seeing uh, what they proposed and uh, seeing so ha many happy uh, residents who are butters, uh, this is going to be a, a, a good addition to our city, and I think that uh, it will uh, and also brighten up the parkway somewhat and, uh, and enhance that value of it also so uh, to our outsiders uh, viewing our community as they travel by and tra traverse our community, they're going to see a, a more aesthetically valued uh, piece of property. And I applaud the neighborhood for getting together with the developer and the uh, applicant uh, to make the proposal a, a doable one for, for all of them. And I congratulate them on their effort. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Gonasso. Uh, before I make any comments, and they will be very brief, I feel it's, I should read into the record the site plan review uh, recommendations, which I failed to do for the prior petition, but I will do on that uh, 200 Ocean Ave special permit request at the full city council meeting. But regarding this, um, this petition, uh, site plan review has made the final, following findings and conditions, um, presented the following conditions to the, uh, the uh, included Number one, the frontage of the property along Revere Beach Parkway shall be landscaped in accordance with the landscaping plan to be approved by the Site Plan Review Committee. The landscaping plan shall include a landscape buffer strip along the rear of the property between the abutting residential properties as well as the construction of a six-foot high PVC fence. The plan shall also include the planting of eight shade trees, minimum caliper two and a half inches along the frontage of the Revere Beach Parkway and two Chanticleer pear trees along Vinyl Street, along the side of this proposed building within the sidewalk area, and a raised landscaping bed on the corner of Vinyl Street and Revere Beach Parkway. Number two, new granite curbing and wood, wooden guardrail shall be installed along the frontage of the property along the back of uh, the sidewalk. Uh, number three, the plan shall be reviewed and approved by the fire department for fire suppression system requirements. Four, new granite curbing and sidewalk shall be installed along the frontage of the property along Vinyl Street. Number five, dumpsters shall be screened from public view on all sides and be set back at least 10 feet from the property line. Number six, there shall be a minimum of 10 parking spaces provided on the site, including one handicapped space. Number seven, all curbing within the site shall be granted or precast concrete, and all ramps and sidewalks within the site shall be concrete. Number eight, all site lighting shall be equipped with deflectors so as not to provide glare into abutting residential properties and be set in a manner that provides lighting towards the ground. Number nine, and finally, all proof, uh, rooftop mechanical systems shall include noise bafflers or baffles and be positioned as far away as, the, as possible from the abutting residential properties. <clears throat> as a former resident uh, of that area down there on Victoria Street, I completely concur with uh, Councillor um, Powers and Councillor Ganasso that one of the best features of this is there will be no more um, uh, the, uh, trucks uh, uh, ambling down uh, Victoria Street. Uh, uh, which is a very, very quiet residential street. And I think also the, uh, the improvement to the property would be is, as well uh, something that we should be interested in doing. It's actually an ideal spot for a, uh, for a, um, uh, a gasoline station, which is exactly what it is, and this will be an improved version, I believe. Uh, uh, a motion is before us to uh, report this out favorably. All in favor? All opposed? Uh, this will be again reported to the subcommittee, uh, by the subcommittee, to the uh, full city council on uh, June 10th, uh, a week from, uh, from uh, next Monday. I'm sorry, next Monday, correct? Correct. All right, very well. Thank you. <clears throat> the last item on the agenda this evening is uh, item identified as CZ-13-02. 189 Broadway Limited Partnership relative to the zoning map amendment at of Lot 8A Herman Street, Lot 3 Beach Street, Lot 4 Beach Street, Lot 90 Herman Street, and Lot 10 Herman Street, and Lot 106 Herman Street Rear, from Residential B RB Zoning District to General Business Zoning District. <clears throat> Please uh, state your name and your address. Corey Rhodes with D'Ambrosio Brown LLP, 14 Proctor Avenue in Revere. I'm also here with Attorney Jerry D'Ambrosio. We represent the Neighborhood Developers, uh, a well-known organization, I think, in this city, in Chelsea, for the great work that they do uh, for senior and affordable housing uh, development and uh, general community development for such things as the uh, Costa Park Playground, which they were involved in. Uh, tonight, we are in front of you on a petition to amend the uh, zoning map for a, a fairly simple change related to uh, uh, six lots that are zoned as residential B that we would like to uh, see uh, zoned as general business. 
this is specific to the 189 Broadway uh, property that you may better know as uh, Reardon's Restaurant, which you can see here on the slide. Uh, the development is for uh, senior housing uh, for Revere residents. It's a five-story uh, structure with uh, 48 uh, residential units and two commercial units uh, along Broadway in the front. Uh, this is a significant investment to the city and to Broadway. We're talking $13 million here. Uh, coming from an organization who always uh, invests a lot of money to make sure the projects are done right, uh, and this is no exception. Uh, this is a senior housing restricted uh, uh, property, meaning that uh, 55 year older uh, family members have to be uh, living in this uh, property to, to be able to rent. And uh, this is a restriction that's actually built into the title. Uh, it's a covenant that, that is called running with the land, something that is going to restrict any future owners. They can't just refinance and take it away. Uh, and this is specifically why this is not 250 Broadway or anything like that. Uh, this is restricted to seniors. It's going to be for re revere seniors. And uh, it, it, it's going to remain that way. Uh, the other uh, great advantages just for the Revere seniors is that there's a 70% preference uh, going to Revere seniors so that when they apply that they're going to get preferential treatment to uh, get these units. Uh, and in talking with residents, talking with seniors, this is something they've always been looking for, a uh, property right in Broadway, right downtown that uh, gets them close to their doctors, uh, pharmacies, shops and restaurants, really right in the heart of the city versus some of the other uh, establishments that you, you may know are kind of... Uh, uh, pretty far away. Uh, to bring it back to uh, tonight's uh, request and the petition that we're uh, before you on, uh, it, it is straightforward that the parking lots at uh, the back of the property are zoned residential. Uh, and we would like to get this changed uh, so that we can start this process, uh, start this project to get this uh, great investment into the city and uh, get this senior housing here right on Broadway. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Attorney. Uh, any questions from the subcommittee first and foremost? None. Council Novoselsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, not being a member of the committee officially, um, I do want to, again, put my uh, positive two cents in uh, working with this organization. Um, realizing tonight we're only talking about a zoning issue, we're not talking about a special permit, uh, which maybe a little more detailed down the road when we get to that point. But for now, you know, I'm, I'm open to uh, a cha making this change in the zoning. Uh, I think it's legitimate. It's, it's not a spot zoning issue because it's adjacent to uh, a, a general business district. Uh, so, you know, I, I would say uh, I would hope that the committee votes tonight to come out with a positive recommendation and hopefully uh, pass this uh, zoning change uh, at our next meeting. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you uh, very, very much, Councillor. And um, well, I have a few minor comments, but I have a couple of questions. One question in particular: What uh, zone? What um, other issues, uh, uh, permitting issues, do you anticipate uh, will be required for the property? It's uh, not completely certain at this time. This is something that we're going to be getting into, especially with site plan review and their analysis of the project and uh, kind of its final aspects too. Uh, see what exactly the relief is that we need to seek. But you do anticipate there will be some. We, we do anticipate issues. there will be some. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Council Novoselsky. I mean, I haven't been having been associated with the property for a number of years. Before that, it's uh, time has come for a change for it, and I think this would be a good one uh, as we. Uh, as we have all commented at one time or another, that uh, we're desperate in, in some ways for elderly housing in the city. We have a very uh, strong and, and uh, vibrant elderly popu population, but certainly uh, they uh, need this kind of housing uh, close to the center city. And, uh, and uh, we're, as we develop, redevelop the center city, I think this will be a, a very admirable uh, component uh, there too. So uh, at this point, I would uh, entertain a motion. Uh, Councillor Hess. Yeah, I just want to make one comment. I, I made the comment in April when the gentleman was before us. I believe it's a great opportunity for Revere, especially the Central Business District. Uh, as we all know, senior housing is at a premium within Revere. And as was explained uh, the night of the public hearing, uh, Revere residents will have preference. And I think that's major for the 
people who live in Revere looking for housing. So at this time, I'd like to move that we fit favorably on the request. Motion before the subcommittee to uh, report this out favorably. All in favor? All opposed? This will be reported out again uh, to the June 10th meeting of the City Council uh, with uh, anticipation of what will be taken on that evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that is the last matter before the zoning subcommittee. I apologize to Councilor Arrigo for going a little overtime here on the Ways and Means Committee meeting, but that will uh, adjourn, I think, in uh, just a few minutes. Thank you.